I might do that soon. That's the uh, Ethereum that I bought and is just hanging in there. I'm just waiting for it to go. That's another, um, what is it? Another, what is it? Another Hoya. I think this is the Hoya. I think I might have given too much fertilizer, but this is the Hoya Silver Splash. I don't really care for this one too much either. It is too bushy. I think I might cut it. But that's the Hoya Splash. And I'll be giving it a lot of this sweat because I have too many plants. Oh, what else? So these are props and stuff. This is um, a dragon scale, I believe. Allocation dragon scale seedling. This is another pop. Is that a poppy? It might be a um, alocasia. It's not a Friday because they say that the variegated one is the Friday. But I can't remember that long scientific name. It starts with an M. But this is one of those. That is one that died back to a quorum. These are all seedlings, by the way. I have too many alocasia seedlings. So it's like these just unfortunately got kicked to the curb. Um, another fry deck. And this is a dragon scale. That recently dried out. I wasn't paying attention to the watering. But I'll be putting those into the pot box with the other uh, baby allocation soon. These are just bromeliads. This one is dying back. Trying to see if it's gonna push up a baby. It's not dying back further than that, so I left it alone. This is another one, and it has a baby growing at this side. Somewhere's off the side. Let me see. And it needs some water. I gotta avoid these. I'll water those, but it has a baby going on it. And that is another one. The flower grows up in the middle, but the flower died back, so it's not there. Those are the other anthuriums that I don't really care for. This is my dragon scale. I think you can make another leaf. And you know, if you know allocations, once they push up a leaf, the other one says goodbye. So, the bottom leaf is over here. I always leave them on until they're completely gone because of course they still feed and send nutrients to the plants. Um, these are my, <clears throat> what is those called? The arrowheads, I can't think which. Oh man, the arrowhead. I can't think which one, but that is it. I don't know if you're getting a good view because it's hard for me to get over there. Got a lot of leaves, it's very bushy. Um, and then we have the what is that called? I can't remember the names of these. Um, Monsteria. Monstera. Monstera. Oh my god. Monstera Redifora. I just put that plank up. Trying to learn this plant. And learn how to care for it. I have cuttings of this plant just in case this one don't make it. They're in the pot box, but I'm hoping it makes it. I uh, can't wait to see the leaves get a little big. Get some size on it. It's like leggy right now. And these are Andonsonii, Monstera Andonsonii. 
cuttings that I'll be giving away. But <laughs> these are cuttings that I'll be giving away. I wanted to cut back the actual plant that I bought. It was too bushy. Um, this one is, what is this one? Monstera Redifloral? No, because that's... One of these got the names mixed up. This is a Monstera too. I'll definitely put the name in. I can't think of the name, but one, two, three, the Monsteras. So the names will be at the bottom. But um, here, this is the mother plant. For the cuttings that I just showed you. And there's more cuttings around here because it was just so bushy and it grew like crazy. I think this is the easiest plant, like if you need starter plants. If you need starter plants, this is a good plant to start with. This one. Uh, let me see. This is, I think a philodendron, no. Oxapot pins. Oxapot pins. Philodendron oxapotsins. Of course, just look for that name. I will butcher it. And this is it. It's a little leggy because I didn't have it on the pole. I didn't get it on the pole quick enough. And of course, it needs an extended pole. I'm just going to change out that whole pole. The That pole is one that I made. This was sphagnum moss and a bamboo stick. I don't care for that pole. So I think I'm just going to put a whole different pole in there. That's the monster. Oh, I can't remember these names. Monstera. Oh gosh. It's at the bottom. A Monstera, check the bottom for the name. I think it starts with an S. Silta Pecano. Monstera Silta Pecano. Again, another easy one to grow. I have cuttings around of that one too. Uh, I don't think that needs anything. I just watered it the other day, like the day before yesterday or yesterday. This one is the Enjoy. Yeah, that's the photos. Enjoy. Just put it on this uh, trellis. Doing pretty good. Have cut it for bad. I'll be giving away. This one is the <clears throat> is the Marble Queen photos. I heard that they fenestrate when they get old, when they get bigger. I'm not sure if I have the right one that fenestrates, but the leaves are supposed to get bigger and fenestrate as they get older. But you have to make sure that they climb and so I gave him a trellis. This is again a cutting of the uh, Diffenbachia. And this is another cutting of the Monsteria Swiss cheese. This is another arrowhead. I'm not sure, I think it's not confetti. I can't remember, but it was a cutting that I bought from a seller on Etsy. It takes a pretty damn long time to grow. It took forever to even get it into the soil. Maybe it's the substrate. Maybe it needs a different substrate. I don't know, but it's not a fast grower to me, but it grows nicely. This was a cutting. Yeah, this was a cutting. This is the philodendron heart shape. And it's doing good. Growth point there. Uh, when I originally got it, it was only like two or three leaves. Maybe two leaves with a, a new one coming up. This is my uh, philodendron Brazil. I never knew that the leaves 
like the green takes over some of the leaves like this. I never knew that. I was wondering if something was going on, if it's mutated. I still haven't checked, so I have to check and see. But these two, instead of it having the stripe, because I always seen the stripe with the line, the whole leaves are pretty, like, basically that lime color. So I want to check that out and see if I have a mutated plant. And then that's um, Hawaiian photos. Is it? A, no, is that Hawaiian photos? Because the these was cutters from the big, like the leaf was like maybe 16 inches long on the cutting, but of course the leaf died back. Um, I'm, I think I'm gonna try and buy that again because I like the big leaf look. That was the reason why I bought it. I ended up with two nodes and I wanted those big, big, big leaves. Like they was huge. So I think I might try and buy it again and just give these away. It's this one that I have another one, which is this one. But again, this one, like I said, I like the big leaves that it came with. As far as the prices that they sell in top cuttings for this plant, if I ever find it for a good price, I may buy it. Um, this is another Capria, the smaller size. It's doing pretty good. That is the biggest leaf. It grew in my care. A couple of them grew in my care. Uh, a, I wouldn't say medium. It's close to a seedling. But it's a small size. And here we have the three canes. Syngonium. Again, Christy. And I ordered this from a YouTuber who just became a Etsy seller. I have not lost any leaves. The plant arrived good and it's still doing great. And his name, <clears throat> I'll put a lot of my plants I get from Equigenera because I just trust that company. Um, I don't really go outside the box because of like pests and all the stuff that you can bring in. And so far, I haven't had any problems with Equigenera or any of the, I think it was only one plant that came with something, but the Three Kings. Nice Sagonians. I love Sagonians and they're easy to grow. Good starter plants. I forgot to show you guys. Forgot to show you this. Uh, what is this called? This is the Hoya. Don't mind the signs on the pots. These are, of course, reused. This is a Hoya Macrophylla. Macrophylla. This is like the common, more common Hoya. The scale issue with Hoyas. What's next? What's next? Hmm. Now let's go down here. Start from the end. This, you seen in the beginning, this is a snake plant. Um, bought this from Home Depot. I just started getting growth. I cut that leaf off trying to do propagation but didn't work out every piece died i wanted to cut it again because i wanted to be bushy i wanted to cut it again and i may cut it again but i just want to make sure i know what i'm doing it next time so that it won't be a waste of a good leaf so yeah it's not that big just medium two pieces um no new shoots and then we have the, what is this? Alamina. Alamina Pink Sam. It's just, it's a nice plant. Remind me of the different buck here. It's, again, don't require much. It's growing. I can't remember where I bought this one from. But, it's pretty. I like the pink on the ends and in the middle with the green. It just looks nice. 
This is my very first Birkin that I ever owned. Okay, I'm an owner of a Birkin, and I ain't talking to that act. Like, but this is my Birkin. It was small. It's getting bigger. I don't know what these spots are. If that's supposed to be there. But yeah, I just started getting. Well, this is my first Birkin looking. I say Birkin looking leaf. That's the first Birkin looking leaf that I received. So I'm happy about that. Because as you can see, the other, they just had little stripes. So I was happy about this. Because you know it's showing a little bit. But then when this one came, over the moon. This is that other Monstera that I was trying to figure the name out. These grow like crazy. The Monsteras grow like hell. But this is another one. This is where all the cuttings came from. It's the mother. And it's doing good. The cuttings I'm getting rid of, but the mothers I'm keeping because I want it to be a certain way when it get bigger. Probably take a top cut and then get rid of the bottom too. Um, this is, oh, I forgot him. This is another one of my favorites. This was probably one of the first philodendrons that I got. It's a philodendron. That's the Sony. The Sony. And not a super fast grower, but it grows pretty good. Nice leaves. Um, have another one. A little tiny leaf starting to peek out. This one just opened, finally hardened off. I gave it a, another pole recently. I had it on the, the homemade sphagnum moss pole that I didn't like. I ended up just putting it on a stick. But I'm gonna add poles to it. You know the, the uh, what are they called? D poles? The D moss poles? I'll be adding those to those to most of my plants gradually. This is the philodendron genervium. Gener genevivium. Genevivium. I don't know why. I think it's probably a vitamin deficiency or some kind of deficiency, nutrients deficiency in the plant for the leaves to be light green. Those were the leaves that it came with. It was on sale, Equigenera. And I believe they're supposed to be this dark green color. I've been meaning to buy a spray for this. I believe the spray, uh, you know, did my little research, supposed to be a corrector. But I still have to get the spray, but it has a new leaf pushing up. It wasn't on a pole. I gave it a pole recently, so trying to see the difference because this little leaf just wouldn't do anything. So gave it the pole. We're gonna see what it do. Uh, this is the philodendron sub hash sub hash sweater. Sorry. <laughs> Philodendron subhashtanum. Well, whatever. And this is it. Again, Aquagenera. This is the stump. And it, when I got it, it had like this little funky twist to it. So I'm trying to train it to go up. Once it start going up, I might just cut it. Oops, I might cut it here or somewhere along there so that I can have a plant that goes straight up. And the same thing with this one. Same thing. Um, yeah, the leaves are pretty red color on the back. They're that color. And I believe, yeah. And they keep the color. They're pretty. And also like a little ring right here. This part is red too. And when it's light shining, you can see the back a little bit better. Like you can see the red coming through. I believe when it's red like that is to catch the sun, the sun rays and 
somehow helps a plant do something with the sun like uh it keeps the sun from passing through therefore the plants get more nutrients from the sunlight something with that then we have the alocasia dragon scale no alocasia mellow this is she the least ever since the weather changed they curl uncurl curl uncurl but as long as none of them are dying the plant is not sure though form of we don't want to be here well in the way it is because the leaves is curling and uncurling but i don't know what's wrong um i give it water you know allocations don't like a lot of water they like to dry out um maybe it's the temperature because i don't i do not keep it warm in here i just make sure it's not freezing um yeah and that is it in the tunnel. Bring the light so you can see it a little better. Yeah. Alocasia Mellow. I have babies of this too. Then we have the. What is this? Skindactus Moonlight. True BI Moonlight. This plant can be fussy. So what I do is I leave it alone. Um, I let the water dry. I let the soil dry completely out for rewatering, um, especially after it had a new growth. Well, growth point just abandoned its leaf and it was just weird. But I really leave it alone after that. So I just water it once it's dry, damn near bone dry. And that is it. It's very slow. It is a slow grow. Don't look for nothing fast to grow on that. And then we have the ivy, which everybody is scared of because of spider mites. And what is crazy is I haven't had any problems with my ivy plants and spider mites. This was a plant that I bought off of Amazon as a little cutting. This was one of three that made it from a group of eight that caught root rot. It was shipped during the heat wave. And it's doing pretty darn good. It was in one of those small, tiny seedling cups. And it just went into a, I think this was a four inch pot. This is my begonia. This begonia sends leaves up, drops leaves. But for some funky weird reason, recently it just started dropping leaves and left me with these two. I don't know if he's trying to grow back and now that I'm noticing it, the top part, like maybe it's dying off and it's gonna send up another growth point. I don't know what his problem. I don't water it, overwater it. Could be the fertilizer. But you're down to two leaves. Um, I like them. They kind of hard, especially if you don't know what you're doing. And I know what I'm doing, but I don't know what I'm doing, if you know what I mean. Okay, then we have this one. We have the Scandactus Exotica. This plant gives me no problems at all. The leaves are so freaking big. Big juicy leaves. I might have lost maybe one leaf and that was like the newest leaves. Like this one right here. This is the second one. These are like the seeding, seedling leaves when it first start. We only lost two. Yeah, it's a, a beast. I just extended the pole. Going good. Probably can't tell, but the leaves are pretty freaking big. They are huge. This leaf was ripped when I brought it. Got it from Home Depot. Yeah, it was ripped when I brought it. But I, I love it. It's pretty. 
I had a hard time trying to figure out which uh, skin dactus it was. I had to go to a plant group on Facebook to figure it out because it's like once you think you figured it out, it looks like another skin dactus. So, but I was told that it's an exotica. And after seeing pictures after that, I believe the person that told me. This is the Alocasia White Dragon. This is the Alocasia. White scale. What? Oh my god. Seriously, what the fuck are you doing? Allocation, which one is this? Silver dragon. So that one is the Allocation Silver Dragon. Again, the leaves are huge. This, I'm thinking is fungal. It just started. I've been spraying, but I think I'm going to cut this one off and maybe half of this leaf and let it finish doing what it's doing. I don't know where that came from, but it just started and it might be fungal and it looks like it's spreading. This is the Allocation Poly. One of my other, one of the many. It's a big one. I'll say like a medium. And I just had to cut it back too. These things right here are spider mite magnets. Out of all my allocations, I noticed these polys are ridiculous when it comes to attracting spider mites. None of my plants have spider mites. The only one that has spider mites is these polys and also the product. The product was the first one. I think the product was the reason why yeah, it's the reason why all the other ones got it. <clears throat> the product is magnets. Allocation is magnets, period, for, for spider mites. But I noticed the product and the poly. Guaranteed. Uh, this is my Monstera Peru. Big. For the price that I got this for, I just had to put these two extenders at the top. It grows pretty fast, pretty good, low maintenance. This is another good plant I would tell beginners to get if you're not sure or if you want to start off with something easy because I'm the type that start off with hard stuff all the time and just make it hard for myself and just learn as I go along. Um skipped over this one is the monstera uh deliciosa common house plant it's a baby i had a big one that i bought from home depot and broke the plant down completely it was getting root rot because the pot was too big i don't know what made me put in these big old pots but now i just got big pots sitting around thinking that it would have been perfect for those plants but it wasn't and that's one of the babies, one of the many babies that I have. Then this is uh, Monstera, what is this? Monstera Lenata. Monstera Lenata. The leaves, of course, looks different once they get bigger. And that's another thing with plants, the leaves look different. But you know, the price of these things be a little crazy, so you gotta go for the little small seedlings and just, you know, keep going until you make it to the big size. I don't know what's going on with that, but that will get cut off. Let me see. It will be cutting that off. But this is the Lenata. Monstera Lenata. And it's stretching out. I just took that out of the prop box, too. Because the pot was small. I didn't have any big pots at the minute, so I had to put it somewhere where, you know, at least the humidity can help it stay. And it did just that little glass greenhouse. This is, what is you? What is this? Okay. 
This is the Ethereum Weber Weber Brony Weboni. What? What the fuck? Again, check the name out at the bottom. Brought it from Equidinera. It's huge. You can't really tell, but it's still in this proclamation pot. And it has three leaves. I think we lost one or two. I got this plant in October. And it's doing good. Doing good. But again, Alvatafolium is what I was going for. It's similar to the Alvatafolium type. I think the sellers got me because I was originally asking for the Ovatafolium. They knew that and they sent me the Weber something, which is this one and the uh, Ovatafolium type. So they knew I was retarded and was just going to end up buying it anyway. This is my Alocasia Velvet, Black Velvet. There's just a little dust on here. Uh, this plant. I really don't have too many problems with this plant again. The only thing it's been doing since the weather changed is like, and you know when it dries, when it's too dry, the leaves are curling and uncurling, curling and uncurling. So I'm trying to find a spot for it. Maybe to get it close to some warmth. It's on a heating pad as you see, and it's still doing the same thing. I think it's because of the draft, the cold draft that the the lower parts of the, the floor. So I have to lift this whole setup. I need to rearrange all these plants anyway. 